It is an engineering marvel capable of patrolling the world's oceans for years without refueling. With a crew of 5,000 and over 90 aircrafts on board, the modern U.S. supercarrier is the flagship of our time. With over 10 escort ships and destroyers, could a modern-day supercarrier fleet face up the entire Japanese Navy of 1942, which includes aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and over 350 fighter aircrafts? In December 7, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in an attempt to cripple the United States Navy and delay their entrance into the war. But then something happens. A supercarrier along with escort ships is transported to 1942. Since the United States Navy lost most of its ships in the attack, on one side is an American supercarrier with escort ships and over 90 aircraft on board. On the other side is the entire Imperial Japanese Navy of World War II, which includes up to six aircraft carrier fleets, over 60 submarines and hundreds of combat ships. Can one modern aircraft carrier battle group hold on against the entire Japan? Or could it even destroy the entire Japanese Navy? Let us say the aircraft carrier battle group arrives in 1942. After Japan attacked Pearl Harbor and destroyed lots of American battleships, they think the playground is open but have no idea what is heading their way. After Japan succeeds in capturing the Indonesian islands, they set their sights for the Hawaiian archipelago. As they approach, they get noticed by the American aircraft carrier fleet. Aircrafts will be sent to confirm the target. The Japanese Navy would have no idea they are being watched. Then. A strike units will be assembled. The Japanese would be detected hundreds of miles away and FA-18 Super Hornets would be sent. The Japanese Navy would bring maybe about nine ships which also includes aircraft carriers and over 300 fighter aircraft. Japanese aircraft carriers and battleships will be destroyed by Harpoon anti-ship missiles. One missile hit would lay waste an entire Japanese aircraft carrier. A group of 10 FA-18s would leave almost all attacking Japanese ships sunk or in flames. All of their attacking aircraft carriers would be destroyed. The Japanese fleets would be in disarray. They were capable of dealing with planes at close distances and not FA-18 Super Hornets flying at altitudes of over 20,000 feet and using weapons such as laser-guided bombs. The US Navy supercarrier would have launched another wave, delivering possibly hundreds of hits and leaving dozens of Japanese ships sunk. Pretty much all of their fleet aircraft carriers and a third of their surface vessels would be lost. Japan would also lose many submarines as they would be haunted by helicopters and some of the aircraft carrier's escort ships. The carrier group would also liberate Wake Island and Guam, dropping possibly 200 or more guided bombs per day. Added firepower would come from main guns of escorting warships. While helicopters may be vulnerable to air attack, Japanese aircraft carriers would be wiped out. Air combat would be a turkey shoot. Japanese fighter aircraft would not even know they are targeted. Heat seeking and radar guided missiles would be used to shoot down Japanese fighter aircraft. If they are too many or too close, even bullets may be used. The Japanese Navy would have no chance against this mighty force. A limiting factor would be fuel. The aircraft carrier is nuclear powered, but its escort ships and aircrafts are not, as they would need fuel. Mimit's aircraft carriers have enough fuel for about 1,500 aircraft sorties. Another problem would be maintenance. Since they would run out of parts, World War II technology is simply not advanced enough to produce any required spare parts. So aircraft would fly for about half a year before they start being crippled. Unless they are being supplied with spare parts from the future, which is the normal timeline for the supercarrier, its escorts and aircraft. 
also a good part of bombs and missiles are satellite guided so long range strikes with tomahawk cruise missiles would not really work navigation would also be a big issue for the ships and their aircraft since they rely on gps as there will be no satellites to provide signals if the carrier group gets new fuel and supplies they would venture out liberating many islands and almost completely wiping out the japanese navy if they constantly keep getting supplies they would deliver a powerful blow to japan by the time the u.s navy of world war ii rebuilds retrains and joins the carrier groups they would attack the mainland and eventually shorten the course of the war thanks for watching the video if you like the video then give it a thumbs up and share it with your friend do not forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell so you will always be updated when we upload a new video doing that should also help the channel grow and create more videos thanks for watching and see you in another video